Temporality of stone, uh, communities, and early sculptural traditions in uh, in late prehistoric Iberia. I would like to just make one point that yeah uh, revolves around petrification. <laughs> that is that stone is part of the landscape in which you know so social life uh, unfolds and is never complete. Is perpetually in, like changing in process, and is is not static and immutable. So, uh, uh, because uh, stone uh, has a long-term durability, uh, it can work, uh, yeah, in longer term, like in longer term uh, temporal uh, frames than, for example, uh, yeah, other type of materials or, or even, uh, yeah, human human actors. And because archaeology is in a very good position to analyze this change uh, in the long term. Um, um, we can see these changes in uh, in uh, in stone in the deployment of stone. So, as an example, I will use the early sculptural traditions of Iberia, um, which are, of course, the ones pres preserved uh, are in stone. But probably there were also uh, yeah sculptures in wood, but we don't know them now. And uh, Iberia is um, well, it provides a remarkable collection of uh, early sculptures um, like distributed more or less all around uh, all across the peninsula. The earliest examples uh, are dated to the mid uh, sixth millennium with the earliest Neolithic are uh, yeah, thousands of many years that are found uh, in the north, in the south, in the west. Some of them are part of uh, very well defined by researchers, uh, very well defined groups or traditions because they are quite standardized. But in some other regions, they are just uh, not 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 very shaped. It's many years like blocks of uh, large stones that are found in the landscape uh, nearby megalithic necropolises. So some excavations have been able to demonstrate that the earliest many years um, were set up in the landscape in the sixth millennium already. But of course, this tradition could have lasted uh, quite quite long. And related to that, we have the earliest many years, sorry, the, the earliest uh, funerary megalithic architectures uh, in Iberia are are to be found in the south, uh, yeah, in this area here. But as you see here with this distribution, well. We can see, like, we can find megalithic funerary architectures um, practically all over uh, Iberia. The oldest, as you can see here, uh, nowadays are dated to the earliest fifth millennium. And um, interestingly, many of these architectures, especially recent research, has revealed that contained uh, sculptures, some of them with clearly anthropomorphic uh, shapes as part of the architecture or within the uh, chambers or even uh, within the corridors or even around the, uh, the monument. We also have, oh sorry, we also have um, uh, better defined, because they are quite a standardized um, collection of um, uh, early Bronze Age, Middle Bronze Age uh, statues and decorated stelae that have been um, classified by researchers uh, into different groups. They are uh, focused on the representation of the human uh, body, also on the representation of weapons. So here we have a face, we have a halberd, we have a dagger, we also have statue meniers. These are three-dimensional bodies of stone that have all kinds of elements. In this case, we have this element that we don't really know how to interpret because we don't know it in the archaeological record was probably something perishable. But many of these have also uh, swords, the representation of swords, uh, in some instances halberds. We also have uh, many weapons represented on flat slabs. And all these, uh, well, there are many of them and they are distributed in different areas of the west of the peninsula. And finally, we have uh, from the late meat um, Late mid Bronze Age until the early Iron Age, uh, there is a larger tradition because it's composed of many more stelae that have been discovered until now. Um, but well, these are like largely like, like two groups of stelae 
because of the iconography that they display, have been yeah uh, grouped in different um, in different traditions or types, and they are <coughs> related to the late Bronze Age. So we have here again human body human imagery. We have weapons. In this case, we have the weapons that are circulating during the late Bronze Age instead of the weapons that are known to be circulating during the mid Bronze Age. We also have schematic human figures. So we have the whole range of sculptures, large stones found in the landscapes of Iberia, mainly in the west. Um, the interesting thing is that they reproduce um, many um, like similar pat patterns in the way they are found in the landscape, so similar landscape uh, settings. Uh, for example, they are uh, very frequently associated to passage zones, to areas uh, where water is relevant and is found during the summer, um, where when Iberia was and is still very dry. And, uh, well, it is thought, um, when we look at this collection of sculptures, um, it is thought that, well, many researchers we go inside that we can look at these uh, sculptures as part of um, maybe not a single tradition, but as part of something related uh, that is telling us something about um, you know, the social relations of all these communities. Because all these distributions overlap, at least in some areas, and they also seem to overlap in time, but of course the chronology is very slippery for these uh, stones. Um, they could be part of something uh, associated to the way these societies were organized. So societies that probably you know, placed a lot of importance in ancestor worship, in uh, kin ties and kin-like ties of relations of social affiliation, the past, collective memories, uh, collective identities. And in this social setting or ideological setting, these stones, we believe, played a, a key role. But of course, that's a very flat way of looking at things. And um, well, uh, I think when you when you look at these stones in, in detail, when you try to go beyond classifications and groupings, types, or traditions, uh, you see that um, yeah, change is pervasive. Variability is everywhere. So what you see is a material process that uh, was produced through probably the interaction of people, different communities in all those well that large region through time. So I have picked up some examples that um, highlight um, yeah, these kind of issues, so how, how we may look at this process that ultimately is a social process, uh, but in which like, these materials were part and how these materials can tell us something about it. So we have the meniers, and in some regions, meniers uh, are part of these traditions that we have identified because they are very similar. We have hundreds of meniers in the uh, in the Algarve, for example, in southern Portugal, which are phallic. They have phallic shapes. They are very similar, uh, like many of them. They seem to have been made like uh, yeah in cereal um, production. But of course, uh, when one looks in detail, there are uh, clear differences between them. But the important thing here is that some meniers may have inspired the manufacture of other meniers because people were looking at these monuments in the landscape. But also, early Neolithic meniers, for example, as this one from Algarve, were reused in the construction of later Neolithic funerary architectures. For example, here we have this example also from southern Spain. Sotom, which was built over uh, an older enclosure with decorated meniers, and um, many meniers were reused to build this huge uh, monument. But we also have meniers that we think were Neolithic, reused to uh, engrave the iconographies that we find, that we, uh, well, associated to other later in Bronze Age Stella traditions. For example, this rectangular idol with a dagger. We also find this motif I uh, pointed to you before on this phallic menhir. And of course, we have again, we have uh, early Bronze Age Stella, this case, for example, that comes from northwest Iberia, 
you see that these uh, motifs or these idols are very similar and they are also very similar in size, like in dimensions, and they are not necessarily close. I mean, they are found some hundreds of kilometers away. This one is again uh, reusing a manier, so these two are found together. So we see there is a degree of standardization, but also we see that these images are inspiring other creations, uh, for example, like this rock art site. This is a, a rock art panel that has uh, schematic paintings, but we also find this idol that again shows the same dimensions as these ones, and also shows a dagger as in this one. So more connections are found in other traditions, for example, the Middle Bronze Age um, statue meteors. There, is, uh, there are more examples like this one that look very, very much the same, all in the north of Portugal. But there are also some variations. Um, for example, this statue meteor that has a very long sword and the halberd, because they are reproducing types that we know exist in the archaeological record and have been dated to the Middle Bronze Age. We know that they are contemporary to these other stellae that are found in the south of Portugal. So we see that they are representing, of course, objects that are circulating, but they are also uh, reproducing similar ways of representing these objects. So we see that there are certain degrees of standardization in the groups that we have identified. We have identified them because of that. But there are also many connections between these traditions. And of course, if we look at the types or traditions, there is variability. And here we have more examples. This is part of the late Bronze Age tradition of the warrior stellae, where we have, again, uh, weapons that are circulating during the late Bronze Age. And here again, we find a standardization in the way the motifs are placed. And again, how the weapons are presented is similar to what we find in earlier traditions. So the weapons are being presented. And we have variability. So there are motifs that um, are being included in this serial iconography. For example, here we have a mirror, here we have a human figure. And yeah. Uh, standardization gets to the point in which we find, for example, very similar icon iconographies further apart. So these two cases are 500 kilometers away. In this case, they, this is being uh, made on a well, statue manier that we think it was manufactured in a previous period. And there are also other examples of late Bronze Age iconographies uh, engraved on many years that, for example, in this phallic many year, we think this could be like a Neolithic many year because it's found in an area where there are many more. So here again, we see an example of this late Bronze Age iconography as rock art. So we see that there is variability everywhere. Of course, I've, I've picked up the good examples, but there are many more. So here we see that the typical iconography of the warrior is mixed with something different, which is a figure with a headdress, which belongs to another type of a stella that you see here, the schematic figure with something here over the head, that of course seems to be related to this kind of stella, which are you know human bodies that are more represented three-dimensionally, that also have a headdress. <coughs> so what I want to say with this slide is that um, what we have done as researchers, we have compartmentalized like all the stones we have. For example, for the Bronze Age traditions, we have 350 cases around. But of course, for the Neolithic many years, we have like many more hundreds. So what we have done, we have organized these materials to study them and to understand them. But of course, what we're losing with that is that at the end, all these uh, objects are part of a process, of a material process. And uh, there is variability everywhere, and there are connections everywhere. So I think that what we're missing is change. And um, yes, so when we look at this um, huge tradition of um, sculptures in Iberia, from the Neolithic to the early Iron Age, uh, there are many patterns that seem to be to be reproduced. As I said, like they are landscape monuments, they are um, they are found in similar uh, landscape settings. 
they seem to be associated uh, with ancestor worship, also with the crafting of collective memories and identities, and there is a certain degree of a standardization, no? And that's why we have grouped them in types or traditions. But it is important to keep in mind the variability, the connections between these groups, and also that they are, at the end, the product of a process. So tr researchers traditionally, when they have looked at, for example, the Bronze Age traditions, they have um, focused on uh, contrasts no? that are found in uh, the ends of this period. So they have contrasted the more abstract imagery that is found in the Neolithic, for example, anthropomorphic figures or stelae in the in Neolithic uh, megalithic monuments, are more much more schematic, uh, whereas in the Bronze Age we find more representational imagery. So these are, this is one contrast that has been used deployed very frequently, and also the other is uh, the collective versus the individual. So we have uh, containers where like many, many bodies are deposited, like megalithic monuments. In contrast, we have in the Bronze Age, we have individual, um, individual spaces no, where bodies are treated and deposited individually. And also with the imagery, it could be said something similar. No? We have, apart from the abstract imagery in the Neolithic, we have also enclosures with many years. And in the Bronze Age, we have the imagery that is not only representational, but it's also in a way individualized. These are individual bodies, but are these individual persons? So, um, and these contrasts are, of course, useful as groupings are, but I mean, to find this from this, um, we are missing everything that is in the middle. And in the middle, what we find is a process punctuated by numerous individual events, which are you know, every instance of monument building, every instance of stella making, or, and that's where we find probably uh, the people that uh, make the sculptures, and of course the, the key questions um, to answer uh, or to understand how they functioned, or how they, yeah, how they functioned socially, I guess. And that's all. Yeah. Thank you.